here if she had prepared a piece, thinking about the Saxon men waiting in the dark for the next day's battles, passing the time with tales or riddles or songs. These are from the Exeter book. Beside the shore and near the strand, right where the sea beats on the land, I, rooted, dwelt in my old place, and few there were of human race who saw my solitary abode. But every morn the brown wave flowed, and with its watery clasp me caught. And little had I any thought that it should ever be decreed that o'er the bench where men drank mead, I, mouthless ones, should speak and sing, or soon or late. A wondrous thing to mine which cannot understand how point of knife and strong right hand, the man's mind, coupled with the blade, pressed me purposely and made me give a message without fear, to thee with no one else to hear, so that no other men e'er may tell far and wide the words we say. And this is the reed. Something more to the point in battles. I am a wondrous creature, shaped in strife, loved by my lord, fairly adorned. My mail coat is motley. Also, a bright wire lies round the gem of death, which my master gave me, who sometimes in his wanderings guides me myself to the fight. Then I bear treasure through the bright day, the handiwork of smiths, gold through the dwellings. Often I slay living men with the weapons of war. The king decks me with treasure and silver, and honors me in hall, nor withholds the word of praise, voices my virtues before the people, where they drink me. He confines me close pent, sometimes again lets me go at large, me wearying of journeying, mighty in battle. Often at the hands of his friend I have injured others fiercely. Far and wide I am outlawed, accursed in my weapons. I have no cause to hope that, if any hostile man assails me in fight, a child will avenge me on the life of the slayer. Nor will the family from which I sprang become magnified by my offspring, unless I, lacking a lord, can leave my possessor who gave me rings. If I obey my lord, do battle, as formerly I did, for my prince's pleasure, my destiny is decreed that I must lack the greeting of children. I can have naught to do with the bride, but he who formerly laid fetters upon me still denies me that joyous play. Wherefore I must enjoy the treasures of heroes in singleness. Often I, foolish with ornaments, anger the woman, frustrate her desire. She speaks an evil word to me, clasps her hand, chides me with words, cries out an ill thing. I care not for that contest. I am sore.